Hello, this is Martin Gore from Depeche Mode. Hi, this is Dave Garn from Depeche Mode, and you are listening to My Nerd Road. Welcome to, and I'm your host, John Justice, here on Depeche Mode, the podcast. Thank you so much for checking out another episode, as always. If you want to reach out to the show, talkshownerd at gmail.com. You can head on over to mynerdworld.net where you can check out the other My Nerd World podcasts. And, of course, if you want to support the show and you're a reader and you enjoy science fiction, check out my Embark seven-book science fiction space opera series. Details available at mynerdworld.net. Plenty of references to your favorite band and mine, Depeche Mode. Also, want to mention that uh, this week's episode is uh, brought to you by MyPillow. Head on over to MyPillow.com. Click on the radio listener square. Use the promo code JUSTICE, and you can receive deep discounts on all MyPillow uh, products. I uh, use the towel set. In my bathroom, I sleep on the Giza Dream bed sheets. I rest my head on a my pillow, and now available is the uh, my pillow 2.0 with their temperature regulating uh, technology. Uh, that includes a my pillow uh, pillow cover. Also, uh, my favorite my pillow item has to, uh, has to be the slippers, uh, the my slippers at my pillow. I absolutely love mine. I wear them every day when I come home, and uh, you would love them too. Again. Huge discounts. If you, when you go to MyPillow.com, click on that radio listener square and type in the promo code JUSTICE. All right, the North American leg, this North American leg of the Memento leg of the Memento Mori Tour um, continues. I'm going to share with you a couple of uh, different pieces. Um, one is an article that was written ahead of the concert in uh, Nashville. Also, a really quick review of the um, New Orleans show as the tour continues. Not a whole lot of news to share. However, one um, intrepid Depeche Mode fan um, grabbed a recent uh, Instagram story that uh, the official account put up. And it just had some uh, behind-the-scenes uh, camera. Uh, it was a behind-the-scenes camera shot of the console there for the production of the show. They focused in on the available track listing that was on the screen, and it revealed a couple of interesting uh, songs that were mixed in with the set list that they're currently playing. Now, talked about this before on the show a, a, a lot. Uh, also, the songs that we had been told were rehearsed. There's a few more on here, though, that at least one for certain that wasn't on the initial list. It seems pretty clear that the band is sticking with the current playlist that they have, apart from some of the variations in Martin's songs and then the swapping out of Speak to Me and My Favorite Stranger. However, looking at the uh, patch list of songs, and you see Policy of Truth, Don't Say You Love Me, Behind the Wheel, Before We Drown, uh, Black Celebration, and Photographic. And again, in my opinion, if they left in um, so the, the existing Memento Mori tracks... Left in Soul With Me, as opposed to removing that. I think that one actually stays in. It's the other one that that Martin swaps out, right? Um, more specifically, Left in my favorite, uh, my favorite Stranger and Speak to Me. And you went and included Before We Drown and Don't Say You Love Me. I think that would absolutely strengthen the set list in terms of covering more songs from Memento Mori, which I know uh, many of you listening to the show have, you know, have wished that they would they would do. Um, don't Say You Love Me, I'm Going to Venture a Guess, is probably a difficult one for Dave to sing live. His pitch on that, and I can just speak from personal experience of trying to sing that song in the car because I love it so much, that is not an easy sing-along track. And I wonder if it's just one that Dave would have a hard time um, singing. Also a little bit more downbeat, but it does have sort of that same energy as the original album version, in my opinion, of In Your Room. Uh, and I think we can most all agree that Before We Drown would also be another one that we all wished were was on the track. I still don't understand how Never Let Me Go and um, uh, People Are Good didn't end up just based off of the tempo of both of those 
um, songs. But again, I'm going over ground that I've talked about at length in uh, previous episodes. I just thought this was interesting that potentially these were the other songs that were available and the band just simply has decided not to do them being policy of truth. Don't say you love me behind the wheel before we drown black celebration and photographic. As always, what do you think? Talk show nerd at gmail.com. Leave me a comment and I'll share it on next week's show. All right, let's get to this interesting article, which is why I grabbed it to share with you, because I wouldn't want to grab an article that was boring and then share that one with you. Revisiting Depeche Mode's legacy before their Bridgestone Arena stop. Examining the synth pop legends catalog and latest offering as the Memento Mori tour comes to Nashville. There was one part of this that well, actually there were two parts that really stuck out, but one part in particular. The junior high axiom was that Depeche Mode meant fast fashion, a phrase encompassing style and ease, something foreign and flashy and suffused with feelings still at a remove from the day-to-day existence of life in the 80s, the world we live in and life in general. Depeche Mode's Martin Gore called it on somebody, and that helped us get an emotional fix on the boys from Basildon. Technical innovators with the eyes of cold-hearted scientists and the hearts like uh, uh, absinthe-plied poets. The mode built a... This guy likes to write clever, at least that's my take from this. The mode built a fan base through sincerity, soundscapes, and cultivated sexuality that invited curious uh, misfits Women who wanted more from life and straight dudes who wanted to dip a toe into synth pop with open, occasionally studded arms. There's one part in here that really stuck out, and that was the mode build a fa- built a fan base through sincerity. He's absolutely correct, and it's one aspect of Depeche Mode that um, I, I I haven't heard covered in as it relates to the enduring popularity and the connection that the band has made with you and I, it really is sincere. The band themselves are very sincere, very open and honest with the tracks that they uh, like and, and, and don't like. Um, Martin has always been very, honest about how he wants the songs viewed, although certain songs, while um, he has kept almost all of them as ambiguous and said as much that he wants to keep them ambiguous because he wants people to be able to relate to them on their own, on their own level. Other songs are a little bit more on the, on the nose. Um, And then some songs he's been open and honest about like a song like, uh, like precious, but it is the one thing about not only the music, but the band itself. It has been that level of sincerity. Like you always knew what you were going to get. And they they never really apologized for anything that they've made. They've talked about tracks they don't like. Um, it's called a heart, not playing a strange love anymore, apart from acoustic versions like this here and there, but not making it a mainstay where I think most of us would agree that a song like strange love should, the full version could absolutely fit in every single playlist on every tour right next to enjoy the silence um, or walking in my shoes for crying out loud. Uh, You know, master and serving could, could as well. The fact they don't do uh, people are people anymore. But it was just that word sincerity that really stuck out to me, and I had never attributed to the band's popularity and, again, the emotional attachment that we all have to them. But it was a real keen observation by this article writer. Some other observations, not so much. One in particular. I'll get to that in a moment. So what does Depeche Mode mean now, he goes on to say. The 2022 death of founding member Andrew Fletcher is the kind of moment that would shake any collective to their foundation. What he brought to the band is not easily quantifiable, certainly not among um, rockists and people stuck in antiquated paradigms. But his absence is felt around all things Depeche, like a radioactive cloud. For a band who eagerly and openly explored all manners of hurt on their records, it's the ones dealt behind the scenes that have continued to map out the story of Depeche Mode. The band has been there at so many very divergence points in the lives of its fans. 
the music for the masses, Violator, Songs of Faith and Devotion, uh, Triptych serves as the soundtracks to so many people's journey in that point in their life. Precious may be the greatest divorce core single since the one-two punch of Elton John's Nobody Wins and ABBA's Slipping Through My Fingers. Remember in the mid-80s when Blasphemous Rumors and XTC's Dear God were direct challenges to the right-wing era religion? These were the 91 rock anthems remained um these were 91 rock anthems and remained mixtape mainstays for most of the intervening almost four decades i wanted to stop and just make a quick point about this um mid 80s blasphemous rumors xtc's dear god directed challenges to right wing uh, reagan era religion um it listen it seems a bit how do i word this it seems a bit pointed and, in my opinion, more common, uh, you know, more commentary on this individual's personal beliefs. So let me explain. I was raised in a staunch Christian um, conservative household. Um, the songs like that, and specifically I'll focus in on Blasphemous Rumors as a young, um, you know, every Sunday church goer Sunday school as well. Depeche Mode songs, even at that young age, were windows into the minds of people who didn't agree with the same things that I agreed with or I didn't agree with the same things that they agreed with. But it also showed me and in some way taught me and made me feel good that I could still love a band even though I didn't agree on every sentiment that they put out in their in their songs. I don't mean to get too TMI here, but when it comes to the sexuality of the band itself at a very young age, going through adolescence and puberty, having found the band at right around that time, um, Depeche Mode kind of walked me through that period. And a lot of what they wrote and the lyrics of their song, and especially a song like Blasphemous Rumors, I didn't necessarily relate to because... I was raised in a much different household with a different set of beliefs that didn't align with this particular song, but it didn't make me love it any any less. And I felt that it was just a bit of um a bit of uh unnecessary ding, you know, directed challenges to right wing Rega era religion. Okay, I understand your point on that, but at the same time, they were also just personal opinions of Martin Gore and what he put into a song, and he himself even questioning His own faith. It's been one of the things with my own faith, and I'm not going to Bible thump here, but just share it with you. It's been one of the things that I've really always appreciated about the band was it seems as if Martin and Dave, to a lesser extent, have always been sort of very open about, you know, not adhering to any particular religion, but including that in their songs. And because of the ambiguity of the music that they made, I could even relate to it, even though I know that I probably am contrary to a lot of the religious beliefs of everybody in the band and probably political as well. And it is one of those endearing things about the band. And that takes me back to the sincerity aspect of it. Martin always mentioned that he never adhered to any specific religion, but he it enjoyed the idea and liked to explore the idea of religion. Um, that's not to say the article writer isn't correct in terms of putting those songs and his description of them it is to say that it just struck a chord with me and i wanted to share that with you as it relates to how depeche mode really helped me grow up you know even for a band whose own beliefs were contrary to that which i was raised in in my household you know but i was also taught that uh, you know everything is a is a gift and it's what you do with it that matters most and i always used you know depeche mode as a learning tool at the at the at the younger ages and as I got older as a a friend when I needed somebody that I can lean on and I didn't have anybody around me I can always go to Depeche Mode's music and that rings true even to this day. The article goes on to say their legacy is unimpeachable. They got inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 2020, which is no easy feat for a band that had neither drummer nor guitarist for the first decade in their existence. Their 1989 documentary 101 defiantly demonstrates that a band can rock despite working only in the realm of electronic 
uh, of electronic, the sequenced and the recorded. The Memento Mori Tour isn't just a heavy concept to process. Right there in the title, if anything, it's speaking truth to the underlying often misspoken aspect of countless artists touring today. Time is short. Tomorrow is promised to no one. I mean, hell, I made damn certain to see DM in the 2009s when Sounds of the Universe tour came around because Dave Gaunt's previous four brushes with death. Memento Mori, their new LP, has a stark quality, simultaneously ornate and spare, illustrating through its structure and gaping void at the center of the band. Deeply ironic, considering how Fletch's contributions were rarely on the record. And yet, this tour and album are defiant statements about the communion between the band and its fans, a drawing of strength from grief and the chaos of a most uncertain world. They may have called their 1986 holy text black celebration, but now it defines them, what they do, what they are, what they offer, and their fans who are now pilgrims to the ride waiting for the night. I hadn't finished uh, this entire article before I shared it with you, but I really do appreciate how the end of that piece really does sort of fit with my um, haphazard attempt at some sort of quasi-intellectual commentary as it relates to the religious overtones and my disagreement with them of Black Celebration, even though I love that song. Talkshownerd at gmail.com is the email address if you want to uh, leave a uh, comment. I always welcome you uh, to do so. Uh, let's go ahead and get to this article, and then we'll dive into your listener feedback this week. Just a quick review of the New Orleans show. New Orleans came alive Saturday when Synth the Gods Depeche Mode brought their October Memento Mori tour to the Big Easy. Celebrating their newest album, Dave Gaughan and Martin Gore are traveling for the first time without fellow bandmate Andrew Fletcher. Frontman Dave Gaughan controls the stage like no other. Flitting from side to side and dancing, his charisma is electric. Depeche Mode might be pushing the 45-year mark as a band, but they show no sign of slowing down. His voice is still in full force, and Martin's musicianship is still on point. The Memento Mori tour will continue its trek across North America through the end of 2023, ending where it began in Los Angeles, before heading back over to Europe for the first part of 2024. Maybe, just maybe, we'll end up seeing a set list when they return to Europe next year. <laughs> All right, let's get back uh, to your listener feedback this week, talkshownerd at gmail.com. And first, we hear from Stephanie from Germany, and you're all friends of the show. Last week, I got the follow-up to the already terrific Monument Depeche, uh, book, uh, Depeche Mode Live. And what can I say? It's just great, an absolute must for fans. I'm going to the author, Sasha Lang's reading at the end of October. I will report back. That's it for me today. Have a good time. Love and best from Germany, Stephanie. Thank you, Stephanie. I appreciate that. Uh, 88 Strange 88 writes in response to that very um, interesting, to say the least, uh, breakdown of all the Depeche Mode albums and his own personal ranking, Kevin F. Kevin F. Uh, you see, 88 Strange 88 writes, Kevin F. More like F. Kevin. Um <laughs> <laughs> but not tonight, horrible, poor man, good. No way. Spirit is the worst. Just messing, Kev. You're entitled to your opinions, even if they are questionable. I haven't heard from Kevin F. since last week's episode, so I I absolutely appreciated his thoughts, even though I disagreed with them quite a bit. So did my buddy Matt, who was as shocked as I was. I found it an incredibly interesting um uh, ranking of all of the uh, albums. Brendan writes, the Postal Service Dead Cab for Cutie uh, version of Enjoy the Silence reminded me of a Richie Ramone gig I was at a few months ago. It was a good 30 seconds before this, um, into the song before I recognized the song. In my defense, as a DM fan, it's not a song I expect in the punk songbook. Silence, it wasn't. Looking forward to catching the band for a second time in Dublin next year. Uh, Malahide Castle in June and Sunshine was one to remember. Hoping for a change in the set list, like with the Spirit Tour when they came back to Europe. All the best, uh, Brendan. Thank you uh, very much for that. Next we go to Jason, uh, who I held this over from uh, last week. 
Uh, thanks for your comments to my remix. Pleased, pleased to hear it. So great to hear you give uh, Duran Duran and Popple Eat itself a mention, both local bands. I often drink on the site of where the Rum Runner used to be and where Duran Duran played in the early days. And I used to see Clint Mansell from Popple Eat itself around town a lot, often hanging out with my favorite independent record shop, um, a record shop with its owner, a place where you could get a lot of mute records, promos, and DM imports. So long, uh, sadly, it is no longer with us. And Clint moved to LA to score soundtracks. So in my Embark book series, uh, I actually have a duo that uh, is introduced in book two, Treasure in Darkness, um, that are directly inspired by and based off of uh, Clint and Graham from uh, Papa Lead itself. So if you read the if you read the series, I I, I describe them. They look just like Clint and Graham. Uh, I tried to give them personalities like Clint and Graham. Um, so, uh, I just wanted to mention that cause I hadn't brought that up before. And I was reminded of that cause I haven't been back to the books in a while apart from selling them. Uh, Jason goes, uh, on to say, uh, I'm so tempted to rank the DM albums, but then I hear John C. Riley from Step Brothers in my head where he and Will Ferrell are discussing belts and Kung Fu. And John C. Riley says there should be no ranking system for toughness. And then it makes me stop ranking DM albums. Most of the bands I listen to, other than DM, probably all do have a theme. And it does, uh, and uh, as does most of my extensive CD and vinyl collection. It's mostly electronic-based. Electronic dance, electronic pop, electronic music. Those I usually follow closely or have a heavy rotation are in no particular order. Um, so uh, I am MX Chris Corner from Sneaker Pimps. Highly recommend if you like DM, but be warned if easily offended. Some songs do use the c word. I'm not easily offended, but thank you. Uh, try uh, Metonia, Volatile Times, Kiss and Swallow to start with. Nine Inch Nails. I'm with you on that. Mostly the electronic stuff, not the metal stuff. Uh, Hesitation Marks has become one of my all-time favorite albums. Uh, and that concert tension they have on YouTube with its lighting is visually stunning. Uh, Knights of Reb, Recoil, Gary Newman, Garbage, yes. Um, Trent Moeller started listening to Minimal electronic, uh, Electronica around 2020. Uncle, Massive Attack, Client, previously signed to Fletch's Toast Hawaii label. PJ Harvey, Primal Scream, Howard Jones, um, Jean-Michael Jar. Uh, Pet Shop Boys, Erasure, Moby, U2, Madonna, although the last few albums have not been great. Foo Fighters, and more recently, Billie Eilish, a phenomenal talent, and an album, When You Fall Asleep, Where Do We Go To, is an album that doesn't sound out of place, sitting next to the likes of DM, IMMX, uh, and Nine Inch Nails. And during a long wait for the new DM album, this album helped fill the void, along with Nine Inch Nails, Hesitation Marks, and IMMX regards Jason. So I'm going to have to check out that Nine Inch Nails album. I um, kind of got off the Nine Inch Nails um, listening. Oh, man. I got into a bit of... Year Zero, I like quite a few tracks off of that, even though that was more of a concept album. Um, but yeah, it was like with Teeth, Year Zero, and then I kind of moved away from listening to any new Nine Inch Nails. But I'll take your word for it on Hesitation Marks and give it a uh, listen, Jason. Thank you so much for the uh, email this week. And thank you so much for checking out this week's uh, episode. I hope you enjoyed it. I know I did. If you want to email me, talkshownerd at gmail.com. And, of course, uh, if you want to support my nerd world, uh, you love Depeche Mode and read science fiction, treat yourself a friend or a family member with my Embark Science Fiction Space Opera series. Follow a ragtag squadron of pilots and one reluctant hero on a journey of survival across the galaxy as they fight for their future among the stars. So written for adults, but great, eight, uh, but great for ages 11 plus. Seven books in the series available in ebook, audiobook, hardcover, and paperback, Amazon.com or MyNerdWorld.net. And you can now purchase both the hardcover and the paperback directly from me. All you got to do is email, um, as long as you're stateside. Got to be in the United States. Uh, shipping overseas is um, way too expensive. As a matter of fact, I had an Uber Depeche Mode fan, Peter Two, 
Um, I was going to send him a book, but to uh, send it where he was was going to cost a lot. So uh, you can head on over to Amazon.com in whatever country you happen to live if you want to pick the books up. But if you live in the U.S. and you want a hardcover or paperback, certainly if you want it signed, um, shipping is only $5 regardless of how many books that you purchase. Um, again, seven books in all. Just email me, talkshownerd at gmail.com. And I'll give you details on how you can buy those right online. And I usually get get them out uh, within a day or two and get get them to you in a week or so. I hope wherever you are, you're happy, you're healthy, you are safe. Praying for the people in Israel that there is an end to that conflict quickly before more um, needless loss of life. And as I mentioned, I hope wherever you are, you're happy, you're healthy, you're safe. Talk to you uh, again uh, next week as I count down to the Denver show in November. Have a great one. Bye. Hello, this is Martin Gore from Depeche Mode. Hi, this is Dave Gold.